Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Brothers, sisters, the calls on uh, disciple, you know, call, cost and reward of discipleship has been a little bit long. And by the grace of Lord, we're now in lesson 19, the rewards of true disciples. Today, we're going to lay the foundation, the spiritual foundation of rewards. Stay with us and, uh, you know, let's close out this awesome course. In fact, one of the things wrong with Christianity today worldwide is that the pattern Yeshua established, which is to make disciples who are sons of Elohim, ambassadors of his kingdom, was abandoned from the 4th century till today, over 1700 years abandoned, and people began to build the human religious organizations, build church buildings, and try to stuff the church buildings with people who generate money, what is called ABC churchianity. The opposite is what the Lord had in mind, to fill people with Yeshua and the principles of the kingdom, the culture of the kingdom, so that they will become salt and light as disciples who go ye on his behalf. And so what we're going to do, just going to lay foundation of the reward system of the kingdom, and then we can go on the next two lessons to dwell on the rewards in time and in eternity. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to come before you to receive what you are releasing. Just have your way, Father. We thank you. We give you praise for who you are and what it has pleased you to desire us to be. Just take over by your spirit and teach us in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Men and brethren, Yahweh, our Elohim, is fair. He never makes a demand on humankind without commensurate rewards for those who obey and punishments for those who disobey. And we need to get that principle very well. The concept of rewards and punishment has been instituted right from the foundation when humans were created in the earth dream. I told in Galatians chapter 2, 15 to 17, the Elohim, the Lord God, took man, put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So this is part of the foundation of the garden, the concept of reward for obedience and punishment for disobedience. In the Old Covenant, the concept of reward for obedience and punishment for disobedience was clearly articulated in passages like Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 13, rewards 14 to the end, punishment. In the New Covenant, the principle of obedience is not, made, is not an external issue, but one which springs from abiding in Him. You know what He said in John 15, Abide in me and I in you. Branch cannot bear fruit except it abide. And then if it abides, it bears much fruit. Then we need to really lay on the foundation also that the mission of Yeshua was related to recovery of what humans lost in Adam. In Adam, the kingdom was lost. In Adam, the glory was lost. In Adam, the disobedience of him and Eve, humanity lost the capacity to live the God kind of life. And men and brethren, that's what the Lord warned them in the book of Genesis 3, 5 and 6. You know, and that Satan targeted Satan targeted it to suggest in verse 5 and 6 that if Eve ate the tree, she, her eyes will be open, she will be like God, to know the knowledge of good and evil. In other words, she wouldn't need God again. She needed to be independent. And that's what she fell for till today. People are still falling for independence. People are falling for lawlessness. People are falling for disorder. People are falling for they want to serve the Lord, but not in the divine pattern 
not in divine principle, not in divine alignment. Everybody wants to serve the Lord. Unfortunately, many are serving from the soul realm, the fleshy realm, which is the soul and the body combined. Men and brethren, from the day of the fall, the heart or spirit man of humanity became vile and deceitful, full of self agendas that may masquerade as religious devotion. And that's what confuses people. Oh, they see all that sign, they see that tongue, they see that whatever prophecy, they see that teaching, they say, well, if these things are here, then surely the Lord must be there. But unfortunately, it's not always so. You, you know, the foundations are important. If the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? So the fall of man, he led to a station where the heart was inherently corrupt. As uh, Jeremiah 17 verse 9 this, um, shows, and the cause of works of the flesh and hard labor became the reward for man when man disobeyed Elohim. You know, everything wrong happened. The womankind, from having direct access to Elohim for everything, now had to have a man as not just a covering to live a life to be pleasing to the man because he said in the book of Genesis three sixteen, unto the woman he said I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee this all came from the cause I mean from the fall 17 and unto Adam he said because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of your life. Tongues also and tissues shall it bring forth to thee. Thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return to the ground, for out of it thou wast taken, for dust thou art, unto dust thou shalt return. And so we need to understand that since Elohim provided everything to humans and they were to live at his benefits and he told them what to do and what not to do, when man disobeyed, the Lord said, okay, you disobeyed me, all I provided for you, you, needed to, you didn't need to labor to have all you needed, now you go and sweat to provide for yourself. And then mankind began a life of hard labor relying on arm of the flesh the earth rim that was caused from bringing forth the beautiful things it now was to bring forth tons and tissues until today it showed the tendency of people to elevate work to a degree that they put the Lord second men and brethren what has it led to it led to the people who have oppressing those who don't have trying to stamp them you know, stamp out everything to make them just live lives of, you know, earning peanuts to be able to just have enough barely to survive and people can stack up for generations. And then in return, those who feel that they're on the ground, they become crafty and do labor like unwilling slaves. And you know what? That same principle is also behind religion of all types, including the pseudo kingdom, the false prosperity gospel. All of them are based on living Elohim's pattern, what he wants, and man choosing whatever he wants. And the result is this, that this state of life, which in man does what he wants and wants God to rubber stamp, is what makes people to deny him the privilege of becoming his disciple. Because disciple is follower. The disciple is not above his master. He becomes a reference point. He becomes, you know, the standard. The gold standard of life is the life of our master. Men and brethren, and that is why it's important to know that from the day when Yeshua was incarnated in the earth dream is when the end times began. The end times is not something that will happen tomorrow. It's already happening. It's already been happening. 2,000 years. Remember that Elohim's measure of time is not the same as human measurement. His standard is higher than that of the earth. And so from the time Yeshua was incarnated in the earth realm to recover what was lost in Adam till the day he returned in glory, 
to take over the kingdoms of this world. You know what? It's all about the end time. And that's why, listen, brothers and sisters, when you see things happening like Israel, 75th bad day is this Sunday, by the grace of the Lord, you know what? You know, we've called intercessors to pray. I'm going to make an announcement after this. These things are all pointing to the ultimate that the Lord says to his church, be wise, come out of the flesh, come out of struggle, come out of this life of living by arm of the flesh and get back to the life of trusting in me and relying on me to make to be your, your everything. Brothers and sisters, that's why as we are doing now, we need to lay this foundation that Elohim is fair. If you obey him and his word, there are blessings. If you disobey him, you're your own. And being on your own, one may actually be serving Satan's interests. And that is why the Lord wants us to truly open our heart to receive his love. His love expressing his word is what will deliver us from those four negative relationship types. Stranger, which many people have, they see Elohim as a distant, unknown God, and they are strangers to him. Unwilling slaves who see Elohim as a hard tax master, so they are crafty with him. They play games with Elohim. Orphans, those who are not able to figure him as a present father. They look at him as a, a father who is not there, and therefore they behave like orphans. They have issues. And those in arrested baby who syndrome, who are ever learning and never able to come to knowledge of truth, just wanting milk. They just want promises. They can't even stand any teaching. They can't stand any digging deep into the world because all they want is promises. They don't want correction. They don't want rebuke. They don't want anything that will challenge the motion of his soul. And so they are in arrested baby who syndrome. The only way to be delivered from it is to give the world space to do a work in our mind, renew the mind, transform the heart, so that we can become a, that thing he said in First Peter 2, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people who show for the praises of him who called us. And brothers and sisters, this is a matter of choice. If we embrace what he is showing us, kingdom culture will manifest just naturally. There won't be any struggle. And that kingdom culture is what will transform the cultures of this world. We are told in Matthew 13, 33, another parable speaking unto them, the kingdom of heaven is like unto eleven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of, you know, three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. That's the way of the kingdom. If you are transformed, your heart transformed, your mind renewed, wherever the Lord plants you, he uses you to touch. So whether you are in the marketplace or you are in the uh, civil society or you are in full-time ministry, you know what? The principle is the same. You are representing the king right there and through you, the king manifests his glory. And when we understand this, we know that it's a better life, it's a superior life to live for the Lord as instruments of kingdom culture, transforming worldly culture. When we do not accept his pattern, we are on our own, a lot of struggle, trying to do things, trying to create religious uh, equivalent of gold, you know, of, 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 of golden statues golden calves and that's what many people do so the concept of reward for obedience punishment for disobedience is intrinsic in the bible from genesis to revelation so this foundation we are laying it for what we are going to share in the next two lessons for you to understand that look if you obey the lord and embrace his call to be a disciple there are things the Lord has promised both in time and in eternity. Get to know them. And if you prefer to live your life the way you want without Him you know, ruling your life, then you're on your own. And these things are so clear. And it's in there in the Bible. 
And the Lord is saying to us, what shall it profit us? To be on our own and he's not in charge of our lives, what does it profit us? It can be very hard. It can be very difficult. Struggling against the current. It can be very difficult. Pursuing our self-interest. And the Lord said, no. I have paid the price at the cross for all that pertains to life and godliness. So it's a matter of having the right priority. The kingdom, seeking for the kingdom and the righteousness of the kingdom, knowing assuredly that all other things that are needful for your well-being are already factored and the Lord will provide them. And at the due season, each of them will manifest and even if the Lord chooses something other than what you expected, you give him right or we are sovereign ruler to make the decision for you. When we elevate him this way in our hearts, when we truly worship him in spirit and in truth with our preconditions, then we are in line for the big payday. And I pray that all every one of us shall experience the big pain of the Most High, the visitation of the Most High, even here in the earth dream and of course in eternity. You know, the many mansions, the big mansions, the great mansions the Lord has stored up for people in eternity. May the Lord preserve everyone to be able to possess it. And for those of you who may be going through issues now, the Lord knows. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Listen, he says, hey, don't ever allow anything to intimidate you. If you are redeemed by the blood, you are valuable. The Lord is with you always to the end of the age. So please would you share this video, friends and family, so that we can everybody can prepare for the next phase of this course when we talk about the rewards for obedience, for submission. By way of assignment, number one, please summarize this lesson the way you understand it. How do you understand it? Two, what new thing did you learn from this lesson? We're going to pray, then I make an announcement. Father in heaven, thank you for the privilege to receive this short message from you. We pray that, Lord, you use it to quicken everyone and challenge us to let go and let you and have confidence in you and trust you so that you can lead us into deeper waters of understanding of your word and we can trust you enough to give your spirit right away to lead us to guide us to empower us and to use us father we thank you let this word produce abundant fruit much more than we expect 30 fold 60 fold 100 fold to your own glory and praise we give you praise in yeshua jesus name we pray amen and amen hallelujah amen amen, amen. now let's still have some uh, uh, announcement for you you know today some of our brethren arrived from America will be with us for a little about 10 days you know yeah, we're going to have a conversation interactive one on the couch one of these days so get ready for that it's going to be live and we're going to see whether Pastor Grace will moderate that you know she's good at moderation and they'll just converse about their experience in London and we look forward to all of you coming in January second weekend of January next year open gates the global conference of this commission please get ready second weekend of january you can buy your ticket now and get all those beautiful discounts for long you know reservation you know we're going to have a live version of open gate before we go i want to say this to you israel is a nation that is dear to elohim elohim told pharaoh he said go and tell pharaoh israel is my firstborn elohim himself said israel is his firstborn of all the nations on earth it is the long hand of the prophetic clock of Elohim. Listen, every prophecy about end of the age was hinged on one factor, the return of Israel to the homeland, as described in Ezekiel 37, the valley of dry bones, that is said, bread shall come upon them. Why? Israel was sacked during the days of Nebuchadnezzar, and for 500 years before Yeshua was born, they were scattered. And apart from 108 years during the Hasmonean dynasty, there was no governance in Israel. They were just in exile to the nations. And they were in exile for 500 years before Yeshua was born or more. They were in exile for another thousand years. They were in exile 
till one day the United Kingdom through the what is called the Balfour Declaration 1929 declared that it was the good pleasure of his majesty the king then that the nation of, that the Jews will have a homeland for their own and then on May 14, 1948 to fulfill Isaiah 66 verse 7 and 8 before Zion travelled, she brought forth. As the British flag was being lowered, the Israeli flag was being raised. The Star of David and Israel became a nation again, fulfilling prophecy. The Valley of Dry Bones, life springing. Today is a tech giant, tech hub of the not just the Middle East, but as part of the world. So Israel is significant. Things happening within Israel and around Israel, they are all part of the things leading to the end of the age. So come with us on Saturday, 13th, by 10.30 UK time, the Greenwich Mean Time is the mean time that separates the world into two, before and after. So 10.30 is 5.30 p.m. Eastern time and 4.30 p.m. Central time. And... You know what? You can calculate India, Middle East, and Australia. Join us to pray for two hours between 10.30 p.m. and 12.30 a.m. Two hours to get the prophetic insight of Israel and where Israel is in world history concerning end-time prophecy so that we can all pray with one accord. And the details of the Zoom meeting will be displayed so that you can come on to Zoom and we can pray for Israel. Please take note. This Saturday, May 13, 10.30 p.m., to pray into 14th, which is the 75th anniversary of Israel. By the grace of the Lord, he led to prefer a poster, which we're going to use to uh, um, you know, sh share with you on Facebook and on, also on um, uh, uh, um, WhatsApp. And you please, when you receive it, please share with other intercessors. Let's pray. We just finished praying for UK, now Israel. Then May 29, we pray for Nigeria, for the Lord to just save the nation from anything Satan had planned. And then the next one will be, you know, 4th of July, the 247th bad day of America, another significant bad day. Brothers, have a blessed day. We love you. Bye-bye.